Hi guys, this is a detailed walkthrough on the Elden Ring Save Manager. So before we get started, I want to explain um, where your save files are and how the application works. So normally, uh, by default, it's app data, roaming, Elden Ring, followed by the folder named after your Steam ID, and here's your save file. So we never directly edit this save file in your save directory. We load a copy into the manager, modify it, then when we're done, we load it back into your game directory here. So there's two ways to do that, and one is create save, and what that does is it copies the current save file in your uh, Elden Ring directory into the manager. Um, if you wanted to choose a different location, you can click import save file, and you can browse to the path of like your downloads folder for your Nexus save file that you downloaded. So before we get started with actions, let's uh, configure some settings here, and let's change our default directory and roaming Elden Ring and make sure you select that uh, folder named after your Steam ID. Then you can change your default Steam ID and I had already set mine but just paste it in there and go. So now that's configured, um, let's import a save file. So now this save file is the same exact save file that's currently in your game and we can get the character names and see that it worked. Now you can update your save file as well, and what that does is, let's say you played the game for a while and you want to update this uh, backup um, with the current save file. So now this save file here is up to date with the one that's in the game. Uh, you can rename characters. So let's go over the tools now. Here's our character manager. Well, actually, you know what? Let's import a save file. Let's import a Nexus Mega Mule here. So it detected that the save file Steam ID is different than our Steam ID. So if we wanted to, we can automatically patch that so we can load this save up right away. So back to the character manager. Let's copy the Mule save file that we downloaded from the Nexus, and let's save it to Kerr. And so if you only have like one, two, or three, or something like that of these, and you wanted to have more slots, um, go in game and create a new character, and then you can overwrite that new character with another save. So let's just get rid of that. So you can see that the duplicate names are not supported, and so if there's more than one character with the same name, it'll automatically generate a random name for you, and that's no big deal because we can rename that later. You can also duplicate save files or characters within the same save file. So let's say we wanted to create a new copy of that guy. So once we're done with that, we can rename our characters now. So let's check out the stat editor now. So let's select our save file, then the character, and let's get its stats. So it's level 249, and let's bring that down. Let's set our intelligence to 33, and let's see what the level's going to be now. So now the character is going to be level 183. Next up is the inventory editor. Same thing, select your save file, then your character. Here's the categories, so let's add some runes to this character. And so you can do 999 if you wanted to, but if you are playing this online and you want to be safe, don't set nine, uh, values that are outside what the normal ranges are. Like golden runes, you can only have 99 of. But if we were to do white pinions, we can have 999 of them. So let's set those. Next up is our file recovery tool. So any action that we do in the manager, before that action is performed, it creates a backup of the save file so that if anything goes wrong or you screw something up, you can always revert the changes. So if you go to file recovery here, you can see that this is all the changes that I've made. So here's the name of the save file, the date, and the time. And if we right click get info, we can see that the action was add inventory items. So this save file is the save file right before we added these inventory items. And you can see the list of characters. So once we found the one that we want to recover, 
and click recover. And now here is the save location. So now we can import that later if we wanted to use it. Once we're done making all these changes, don't forget to load the save and that'll copy this modified save file now into your Elden Ring save directory. And you can also see that even loading saves, this backed up the current save file in your Elden Ring game directory just in case you accidentally loaded a save and overwrote a save file that um, you wanted to keep. It's still cataloged. All of these files are compressed down to 2 megabytes, um, so you can have a decent amount of them without taking up too much space. And when you click Recover, it automatically decompresses them. So that is it, and I hope you guys enjoy.